Our psalm today is a psalm of lament, a cry for help, number 137. A little historical context will help us understand the psalm. As you may recall, the kingdom of Judah, the southern kingdom, was overthrown by the Babylonians, conquered, Jerusalem destroyed, and most of the people of Judea were carted off into captivity to live in Babylon. There was the ancient thought that by breaking the people's relationship to their land, to their soil, to their crops, to their way of life, and by breaking their relationship to their God, who ancient people thought resided in the territory, that they would break the people of God's will to be anything now but Babylonians. It's an attempt at integration. It's an attempt at overcoming resistance. So the people are carted off to Babylon and there they become the object of ridicule as they continue to try to worship their God from afar. That's the background of this Psalm and it begins by the rivers of Babylon. There we sat down and there we wept when we remembered Zion. On the willows there we hung our harps For there our captors asked for songs, and our tormentors asked for mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. It is mocking of the people of God. It's not enough that they've lost everything, and now they are the objects of ridicule for believing in a God who couldn't save them. And so the people weep. They long for home. They hang up their instruments, they unplug their amplifiers, (laughs) and they stop singing because they're in the midst of the darkness of exile. The psalmist asks the question, how could we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? Seems like a strange question, but maybe, maybe they too wondered whether they still had a God or whether their God had been defeated by the Babylonian gods. That's how the ancient people thought. If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand wither. Let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not remember you, if I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy, Lord, let me never forget. Let me not be here so long in captivity that I can't remember As subsequent generations come and go, the memories will fade. And maybe Jerusalem's ashes will not just be ashes in a physical sense, but in the memories of the people. At verse 7, the psalmist turns to ask for revenge, for justice, for the scales to be balanced. Remember, O Lord, against the Edomites, the day of Jerusalem's fall, how they said, tear it down, tear it down. Remember those evil words, God. O daughter Babylon, you devastator, the psalmist says, happy shall they be who pay you back what you've done to us. And then in the most disturbing line, the last line of this psalm, The psalmist says, happy shall they be who take your little ones and dash them against the rock. Who kill even your children? I mean, really? How can we utter these words to God? That's probably a question that comes to our minds in this place. But then on the other hand of it, If God is our God, how does God not already know that we think these thoughts, that we have these feelings? So where else can we offer them? How do we manage our anger, our terror, our fear, our need for revenge? If we don't act upon it, and the people surely could not, then where does it go? Here the psalmist says, give it to God. These words are some of the most troubling in scripture, and yet we know that they are reflections of the human heart. So maybe the question is, what do we withhold from God 
in the name of good manners. And does God really already know the darkness of our hearts? Let us pray. God of courage and compassion, comfort the exiled and oppressed. Strengthen the faith of your people and bring us all to our true home, the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.